Good morning, everyone. My name is Jason Robinson, and I'm going to give you a little introduction to our Greece Geostreamer program. We have some fast track results, so we can generate some interest in the in preparation for license round next year. So here's a brief overview of the of the talk. I'm going to give you an explanation of the location, a regional geological overview with um, and then a, a description of some of the, the basins and plays that we're going to be talking about and looking for. And this can be split into three areas that I'll focus on with some examples of the seismic. The North Ionian, which consists of the Apulian Plateau, the Pre-Apulian Foreland, and the Hellenite Thrust, Central Ionian, and then South of Crete. Here's an image of the, a map of the program itself. The, it extends from the Albanian-Italian border all the way around to the south of Greece, to the easternmost extent of Crete. It's a, a, a regional program for general exploration purposes. In the north of the northern Ionian Sea, we have a 10 by 10 kilometer grid of lines and these extend out over the edge of the platform into the abyssal plain for some of these lines. To the south of Crete, we have a 20 by uh, 40 kilometer grid, which is a more exploration, uh, more sparse grid. And then there's a, an arrangement of lines in between to, to image the, the um, deeper waters. It's a sparser grid and then some lines in around the uh, uh, existing discoveries. And we have a lot of legacy data in here for infill as well. It's in preparation for a license round in 2014. There was a, definitely a new data requirement. The legacy data is from the late 70s and early 80s. We acquired seismic and uh, gravity and magnetics data. It's on a, available on a multi-client basis, and it exists of 12,500 kilometers of new data. There were two acquisition parameters used. Uh, everything required was recorded with a 10-kilometer 10, 10 streamer and using Geosource. The lines in black were recorded with a 25 meter source interval to improve the inline sampling and a 10 second record length. The lines in red were recorded with a 37 and a half meter source interval and a 14 second record length to image deeper, image the, the basement and if possible down to uh, you know, the, the crust, down through the crust of the Maho. Here's the details of the acquisition parameters. So the, the source was either 25 or 37 and a half, and it was a geosource, so it was recorded, it was uh, generated at nine and five meter depths. So the data that's available uh, now is indicated on the left here. It's the fast track lines in red. So it's a subset of the data that we've accelerated through the through the processing, in order to get an early view of what's what's there and get a get geologic input from interpreters, so that we can have a, a geologically guided processing flow. On the right hand side is a map of the existing data, legacy data, and the vintage of this is uh, coloured, and it runs from 1975 through 1985 and then some more recent 2000 data. It's all very short offset, um, short recording length, and most of it, as you can see, is, is imaged close to the coast in waters that could have been drilled at the time. It's a variable quality and variable source type as well. We're reprocessing about 6,000 kilometers of this initially, and that is to tie our new data into the coast and to tie it to wells and for imaging in, the, in these shallow water areas where we weren't able to operate for environmental and practical reasons because of the streamer length. The fast track processing flow is to remove the ghost with the GS streamer and GS processing and then to run a multiple 
uh, removal, and then one kilometer of all-seat analysis for pre-stack Kirchhoff, and then apply Q compensation. So here's a little, little overview of the geologic setting. The Helenite and uh, Greek alpine activity has been pushing down to the southwest, and the, uh, the speculated oceanic crust has been subducted underneath this as a, uh, as a result of this, this collision, this uh, interaction. The current uh, sea, uh, coastline represents the, the major uh, uplifted inverted uh, helenoid activity. So it's the, a combination of the Ionian and the Pre-Apulian, and then further to the east is the Gavro and Pindus. And the geologic domains that are represented in the offshore in this area are the Apulian platform, which extends up into, into the Adriatic and in Italy, and there are existing plays up here. On the margin of it, there's a, a, a shallow fallen basin, which is fairly narrow, uh, down alongside uh, Corfu, which runs along this red line here. And then on the other side of this is the, the shelfal area, narrow coastal area, which is the uplifted Hellenide and Ionian um, uh, area, which is overthrust, thrust naps, and uh, represents some, some potential. To the south of the Cephalonia Fault, there's more of the pre apulian uh, overthrust material, uh, which extends out to this uh, bathymetric contour, and similarly down to the south is overthrust material. Out on the, in the Mediterranean itself, on the outboard side of the Hellenic Trench and the trench systems to the south of Crete, is a, a larger slab of continental crust which overlies the oceanic, and there are areas where there, there may be very good potential for thick sediment, but it's in very deep water. So in the North Ionian, I'm going to go through the North Ionian central area around uh, Cephalonia or south of Cephalonia, and then south of Crete. So this is the North Ionian area. The play types here are represented by the Apulian platform itself, Apulian ridge here, and uh, Northern, for example, has, has uh, a couple of play models up here uh, within the Apulian ridge itself. It's represented by uh, Cretaceous to Eocene carbonates and then overlain by more recent sediments, which could provide a good seal. The, because of the tectonic regime, this is a flexed carbonate platform and uh, has a ridge that runs, runs from south to north, and it dips down to the south towards the Cephalonia Wrench Fault. So there are, there are, there are plays in the actual Apulian ridge itself, on the margin of it is the, is the fallen basin, which would, should have reworked carbonates down on, on, the, on the flank, and which is overlain by minus the stratified uh, flysh type sediments. And then close to the coast itself is the actual uh, Hellenic thrust, which is represented by Paxi and Ionian sediments. So those will be different play type rather than stratigraphic. Um, and fault controlled plate types in the Apulian, these will be thrust, and if the salt involved here, the, the, if, it's, if it's present, um, could provide some plays up against the salt. So some examples. This is, this line runs from the uh, Prevoza Bay area out across the Apulian platform onto the um, and further, further out to the east, it drops down onto the Ionian. Here you can see the, the, on the north, to the northeast side, the Paxi, or Pre-Apulian, which has been upthrust and overthrust and has these fold naps. And the place, you know, this, this is a fast, early version of the fast track processing, so it will improve from this once we get the velocities and imaging correct. But we're getting very good resolution in the near surface and we can, we can pick these tops of the, what we believe are the, the carbonates on this unconformity. Off the, off the edge of that margin in, there's a small fallen basin, and then you can see the flexed Apulian platform out to the, towards the southwest.
This line is a little further north. Here you can see the, the fallen basin, which we'll zoom in on a moment, and the, the carbonate platform with its uh, these north-south running, because of the, the, the nature of the compression, it has these north-south running uh, faults and horse grab and so there's an extensional extensional essential regime in the in the center of the of the of the platform which is relief for the compression over to the east two days EAG will be over by then so we're going to zoom in on a, on the shallow area here in this in this section this runs from about one and a half seconds here down to the base the base of this basin is this fallen basin and the unconformity is at two and a half seconds. So we have a good, a good stack of sediment and it's in about 1,500 meters of water. Here we can see the top, top of the uh, unconformity of the carbonates on the platform. So this is uh, Eocene carbonates. And the play model in here is that it will be reworked carbonates that would have come down onto the margin and then been overlaid and sealed <laughs> form a good seal. This basin extends uh, further to the south, it, get, it deepens and provides some good opportunities. Here we have a line running from north to south along the uh, from the, along the, Apulian, um, the Adriatic yeah, so the Apulian platform and we can see some, some areas of uh, also extension and uh, uh, sediments that have Formed on top, and you can see it. You can see it diving to the uh, to deeper waters down towards the Catalonia Range Fault, with a thinner thinner layer of sediment down down in the south. So the Apulian platform flex carbonates uh, provides a good opportunity for structural traps up against uh, the faulting. There'll be stratigraphic traps at depth if we have the the uh, uh, porosity and permeabilities. If they exist, we need to drill it first. Uh, there's been speculation about the possibility that the Triassic evaporites extend from this far to the west. If they do, there are opportunities below the salt. And then there are questions relating to the burial and temperature gradients, i.e. maturity. And we have analogues from the Italian side, which, which support the opportunities you know, for, for plate concepts at depth on the Apulian platform. The more recent Cenozoic Fallen Basin, um, where we have these reworked carbonates and sediment that's been, you know, the seal has been formed, uh, provided by the Hellenized uh, orogeny. And sediments of up to two kilometers thick in the south. And then there's the inverted Nova Thrust Paxi and Ionian zones, where we have structural, structural traps and salt control with potential for diapirism and, and uh, inverted salt in that thrust. This model here is what plays into the central Ionian area. So here it's to the south of Catalonia, it's in the Bay of um, Patras, Patriarchos Gulf, and runs down to the south to the Catacolon Discovery. So in here, it's been up thrust and over thrust, uh, and fold, and folded maps, very structural. This is a model that Triton put together in the, in the uh, Gulf of Patras. And our control here is really driven by the evaporites with a combination of thin and thick skin tectonics. The seismic, the legacy seismic is really very poor quality and so there are questions around the, whether the salt is diapiric or if it's thrust. And we have this, this uh, we need to develop our understanding of the interface between the Apulian, the Pre-Apulian and the Ionian and where those thrust boundaries are. What is clear is the top Eocene unconformity, so the top of the carbonates and the flesh that's been deposited on top. And this is what's been drilled successfully in the past. So it's drilling on those, on those highs. In most places, we believe we have a good top seal. Um, but because of the structural complexity, the reservoirs might be, might be limited in extent. Further to the west, 
there's a question of where the oceanic crust, ex well, what the extent of it is and how close to the coast it, it, uh, it is, and, and what is the nature of this, this continental ocean boundary. So here's a line that runs from almost Catacolon, it's just off the, just at the edge of the image here, out to the southwest. And we can see the, the structural complexity and imaging challenge that this, this region will pose. But we're getting good imaging for these very early results, and we can pick our, our unconformities of, of the top of the carbonates uh, from the thrust material, over thrust material. So the things that we need to identify are where the, the principal thrust sheets are, and the preapulian or paxi ionian contract, contact is, and then image these faults and identify the highs and look for, for both uh, stratigraphic and structural traps in the area, as well as identifying the salt, so we can see that there are areas where it appears to be diachroic salt, Triassic salt that's, that's been remigrated. Here's a uh, north-south line in the same area. Uh, this line is 180 kilometers long, so it's highly compressed in the natural sense. Um, we're going to zoom in on, on this, this rectangle here in a moment. But we can see there's an extensional, extensional regime, because it's perpendicular to the, the direction of, uh, of principal stress. And very clearly delineated fault structures with smaller faults in between, nice, nice and conformities, and uh, extensional basins that have been formed with more recent sediment in them. Here we've zoomed in on on this area, and we can see these nice, nice reflectors with unconformities, nice what looks like top carbonate again with erosional surface, which could well be karstified if they have a, a, a appropriate uh, sediment on top, it could form a good seal. And then we have lots of structural uh, control here as well, that if it's sealed, could also provide good trapping mechanisms. And that really is the, the trapping mechanisms are the, is the big question in Greece. There are hydrocarbon shows throughout the, the coast um, of gas and oil, gas seeps down the coastline. So we know that there's a petroleum system that's working there. It's just a matter of finding the, the traps. We're going to zoom in on, on a, an area here just to show the, the resolution of the seismic in the near surface. So we're at one, we're at two seconds just in here. And we can see the, the nice structural control, extensional regime of these uh, is faulting. You can see the nice unconformity and sediment on top, and thick layer of sediment beneath, which, which is, is known to be productive in terms of the source and the carbonates. So south of Crete, it's a more complex situation. Here we have a, a transtensional regime where we're on the margins of the, the Hellenide thrust. So, so this this oblique convergent uh, forearm setting is is a, a provides some challenges in terms of finding uh, you know, finding productive or uh, prospective areas. Some of the questions that we posed for ourselves is, you know, is there a Mycenaean salt in the area? We have di we've, we've seen different maps of, of the salt in extent, and it varies tremendously. Our Geostream and GS data should be able to answer that question. What is the provenance of the sediment um, for the thick layers of uh, sediment that we've seen? Where is the location of the Mediterranean region? What is its structure if our lines extend that far? And of course, then. You know, that Mediterranean ridge probably is a, the accretionary prism from the subduction. So here's a line um, misplaced it's a little further down to the to the southwest. So it extends from the from the coast down to the to the Libyan border. So the northeast and Crete is up here on the right hand side, and it extends out through the the overthrust um, you know, Cretaceous to Oligocene, Eocene uh, overthrust material with more recent sediments on top. There's the, uh, the Pliny Trench, and then the stable 
an abyssal plain, which we believe sits on continental crust with the oceanic crust beneath it, which is being subducted. And this over here is the accretory prism material, which has been stacked up as a result of the oceanic crust subducting underneath. So here we know we have we have some uh, good opportunities and uh, thick 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 can I go back? thick layer of sediment over the continental crust with the sediment on top. We need to improve our imaging so we can figure out what this is and how much sediment we have here. But it's in extremely deep water at the moment. The next line runs from south of Crete to the southeast. So Crete is here up on the left-hand side of the northwest, and it runs to the southeast. So this is the same overthrust inverted uplifted material. It's the Ptolemy Trench, or Ptolemy and Strabo Trench. And these are a result of the uplifting and structural control at the near surface rather than a deep tectonic uh, control. Outboard of this compressional regime, we can see an extensional regime of uh, horse and graben and sub, um, yes, uh, yeah. material that's more recent uh, sediments that's infilled in these graben structures. And then further to the southeast uh, is evidence of mud volcanoes, which we believe is related to the subduction in the accretionary prism and remobilization of, uh, of sediments at depth. So once again here we have a thick layer of sediment, a uh, great opportunity for hydrocarbon accumulation and uh, source accumulation. We have structural opportunities for uh, this horse and gravin regime. Once again it's in deep water, so it's, it's, it'll be challenging. And then similar structural control in the overthrust material to the, up close to Crete. The, the real question is, you know, what is what are the, the sediment thicknesses for, for these productive areas? So we'll see that once our imaging is improved. So the license round timing acquisition of the seismic was uh, completed early this year, and it's in processing now. It'll be completed. Data processing will be completed through presac time migration by the end of this year or early next year, and then interpretation will be in Q1 of next year. And the data will be available you know, as soon as it's as soon as it's ready. We'll, we're, we have a plan to run some full tensor gravity gradiometry in the area as well, but that is subject to getting some pre-funding for the for the project. This will be really useful in helping to build our velocity model and to differentiate between salt and carbonates and at depth in in the overthrust areas. The license round opens in mid-2014 and will close late 2014. So our data will be available from, hopefully from the end of this year, allowing six months to evaluate it and prepare for this, this license round activity. So our preparations for licensing is on track. We've got great data with some uh, tremendous imaging potential and some challenges in the structurally complex areas. There's several plate types that we're we're identifying already. We know there's a working hydrocarbon system with the seeps and leaks at the surface. Uh, maturity is known in some areas and it's quite likely in others. It's the trapping that's the, the challenge in the area. So it's uh, once again a demonstration that the Geostream and GS technology really does make a difference in, in opening up new markets and new areas and providing a, a superior ghost-free image. That's it. Thank you very much.